Okay, well that's good. Well, we're going to start right off with uh, Sandy. He's going to do his uh, airbrush seminar. Yes. This is again one or two weeks, uh, two months ago. Uh, basically, this will be very similar to the first one. I'm going to hook up an, air, uh, an airbrush, uh, show you how to use it, show you how to clean it afterwards, and uh, let everybody have a go if you wish. Okay. So first of all, airbrushes. This is the original type of airbrush we had back in the 70s. It's a single action brush called a Pash, Pash H. I think most people at one time in their lives have had a Pash H. They're an excellent wear brush, great for beginners. But uh, since then, in those days, we've moved on to the double action brushes, uh, the Iowatas, the, the uh, Badgers, etc. Today, I'm going to use an Iowater Revolution, which is one of their entry level airbrushes, quite inexpensive, very good quality. Very good, very good uh, um, price, about 150 bucks, something like that. So your airbrush, next thing you need is a compressor. This happens to be an Iowater compressor, it's an Iowater Sprint Jet. These are about 200 bucks. Nice thing about these airbrushes, a compressor and airbrush, it's very quiet. Can you hear that? Pardon? Can you hear it? Pardon? <laughs> Can you hear the airbrush? This is very, very good, especially if, you know, if you're uh, your spouse is, doesn't like you making a lot of noise. What? Okay, the paints I'm going to use, I normally use the Tamiya paints, the acrylic paints. They're uh, readily, readily available, they go on very, very well, easy to clean up afterwards. And to, to thin it, to thin the Tamiya, we use the X20A thinner. Uh, it's an acrylic thinner. We can also use, in some cases, people have been using the uh, lacquer thinner. Uh, for cleaning them, for uh, thinning them. This is a, it uh, gives it a much bit of a better bite. It goes on the plastic a little bit better, but it's a little bit smellier. So today, we're just for today, we're just going to use the normal x 28 um, Things for, uh, for example, when we, when we uh, mix the paint, I'm going to use uh, some great Tamiya paint here. Little uh, mixer, badger mixer. Okay, after you've done that. <laughs> and the uh, ratio of thinner to uh, paint is about 50 50. So half paint, half thinner. So I'm going to put some thinner in here. And then just a little bit of the Tamiya. About half and half. This is just water in the, in the here. We have just done water to clean the uh, little eyedropper here. Now I'm just gonna just gonna mix this with a little little uh, Tamiya mixer. Just mix that up like so. Setting it around about the 15 psi. I find that quite a good uh, pressure to get the Tamiya paint. Uh, you can alter the pressure, you can alter the, uh, the, uh, the ratio of thinner to paint, okay? So I'm just going to put this in here and just tidy up a little bit. I always try and keep everything clean when you're uh, airbrushing. I always try and keep things clean because it makes things a lot easier. And uh, one thing that's important is always keep your airbrush clean because if you get, it gets dirty and gets gummed up, it won't work properly. Okay, so put it over here. So now we've got a ratio of Tamiya paint to thinner to about 50-50. About, about uh, 15 psi. <coughs> Put just a tad more thinner in here, it's a little bit... Uh, Splattering a little bit, so I'm just going to put a little bit more thinner in it. Maybe it's nervous. Yeah, <laughs> stage fright. Stage fright, yes. There we go. Sandy, would you put that on bare plastic or would you find it first? 
Um, I, you can, um, some, up till recently, I've just been, I haven't been, I haven't been putting a primer down. I've just been uh, spraying directly onto the, uh, onto the plastic. But now, lots of times when you have a mixed media kit, for example, you have brass, turned aluminum barrels, you have photo etch, it's best to put a primer down so everything's the same color. So I would use this, this various types of primer. I like to use the um, um, 1200 uh, Mr. Surfacer, thin that down. And that gets a really good, uh, a good base. Okay, does anybody want to come up here and have a go at doing this? Here I've got some paper here. Come out and have a go, have a go, all right? Okay, what you have to do is just hold it like this, push it down, and that's the air, okay? And pull it back. Okay, there we go. This compressor has got a, uh, a water trap on it. Actually, it's got two water traps on it. The first one's on the compressor itself. Second one's on the airbrush. That also doubles it as a, uh, uh, a handle for it. So you can you can use it to. Which model is that? What model? Yeah, that's I want a sprint jet. Keep the water. Because the one I've had runs continually. Yeah. I mean, it's got a shutoff valve. Yeah. And how do you get a finery? You just. Uh, you go closer. All right. Well, you can't. I thought you were just. No, no, no. You can shift it around. You can go closer. Anybody else want to go? the water trap right into the base of the airbrush? Yep, it's right in there. What, do you want to go? Yeah. Oh, anybody else want to go? Go airbrushing? Yeah, do you need a water trap? Yes, yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. I would, otherwise you'll get, you'll get, you'll get a splash. Yeah, it and it'll... Like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Any questions so far? Here we go. When you're airbrushing, don't just build it up, build it up gently like this, okay? Don't do a, uh, don't do this like that. Just do it like that. Build it up gently. Build it here like so gently. Build multiple light coats. See what's going on? I'm building up gently like that. Now, if you want to get, if you want to get a thin line, you go closer. You see like that? Everybody see that? Now, as you as you pull it back, as you, as you get as you get closer, you get a thinner line. Now, you can also get a thinner line by mic by changing the uh, ratio of thinner and changing the air pressure. But right now. I can get from there, right down to there, and as I pull it back, it goes like that, see? Which needle do you have in your airbrush now, Sandy? I think that's a point, uh, one, that's probably a point, point three, I think. This one comes to a point three. Is that general purpose? Yeah, yeah. This is, actually, this is fine. From, for, all the, for, for most applications, this is fine. If you want to get something, you can get up to a 0.15. I think it's the smallest. 0.18. I think the uh, the the uh, harder steam bag is 0.15. If I'm, I do have a, I do have a harder steam bag with me. I think I've got it here. Oh, do you have one? Yeah. Have a look. Do you want to look at one? But for general purpose modeling, I think a 0.3 is fine. But uh, for general purpose modeling, I think a 0.3 is fine. Uh, that's what that's what this one comes with. That's what the uh, little revolution comes with. This is a great little brush. If you want to buy, the thing about an airbrush, don't buy one of the cheap ones. Because if you buy a cheap one, you're going to waste your money. If you buy one. I think there's a Neo. Is it Neo? They make a Neo. Neo, which apparently is Iowa is. It's to compete with all the cheap Chinese knockoffs. But it's I've heard various various things about it. So buy a proper Iowa. Uh, I think the, the the entry model is a revolution. You can then go up to things like the uh, high performance, which are very even a uh, hundred dollars or so. Or you can go right up to the uh, some of them up to, up to even four hundred dollars for a top of the line Iowa waters. But that won't get you any better results for general modeling than this one here. So, you can get these at Curry's. 
you can get them at uh, uh, Hornet, you can get the most uh, model shops which carry the uh, Iowata. The good thing about Iowata is you can get all the parts from uh, Curry's. If you need a new needle or a new uh, whatever. Did you do your uh, camel with that one? Or with this one? With the what? The camel work on the... Yeah, I mean, uh, no, this is this is this was done. This actually, this camouflage was done with the old uh, Pash. Really? Oh gosh, yeah. That's a great little airbrush. I mean, a lot of people guys still use a Pash and they get great results with it. Very good. Still use Yeah, exactly. Um, what do I talk about? So we. Basically, we've hooked it. We hooked the compressor up. We've done a little bit of airbrushing. Um, the other thing, which is very important, is when you finish airbrushing, is to clean the airbrush properly. All right. I can't stress enough how important it is. We had a guy an airbrushing demo a couple of weeks ago at Hornet, and he brought his airbrush in, and it was completely gummed up. He hadn't cleaned it. The needle was stuck in there. So it took me about half an hour to take it all apart, clean it, and put it back together again. Because, and then they all say, they wonder, well, when I went to use it second time, it didn't work. Well, if you don't clean it first time, it will, that will happen. So basically, I want us to, uh, should anyone have a go at it? Nobody want to go airbrushing? Don't be shy. Don't be shy, yeah. Alexis. You have to play with somebody else's tool. Yeah, exactly. Tools well, that's a bit strong. <laughs> that's a bit strong, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, well, if not, I'm going to show you how to clean the airbrush. Who wants to be a key cat? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Where's your pedal? Wait, what? Where's your pedal? Pedal. Your pedal for your compressor. Oh, no, it's just, it's, 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 it's off. It's off, it's easy. Oh, it's beautiful. Go right, go right, right close. I don't want to spill that. Yeah, just pull it back. I don't want to I gotta practice my model. Maddle. Yeah, my maddling. Maddle. 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 Ah, okay. No. That's, 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 that's good. Then. I'm not fixing that. It's a little bit too much spray. Thin it a bit more. What's a, what's what's your pressure you put? I got to set it to about 15 psi. Let's try a bit higher. I'm gonna practice my Italian smoke. At least I didn't have to buy a hundred dollar tiger can for those two parts. I don't like the uh, Oh, I do. I, I like that better. Uh, oh, no, no. no see, can I paint on the No, I don't like the open cup. Anybody use the uh, closed cup of paint on your airbrush? Or do you use these? Are you one of these crazy guys that use the open cup? Uh, I'm an open cup. You're an open cupper? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. That's why I got paint all over my fingers. You'll, you'll tilt it over far and spill paint in your model once. Oh, yeah? And after that, you will all. Oh, that's awesome. I find this, this this size cup, it's good enough to paint a whole model. In fact, that's your model anyway. What? So. See, I'm an Aztec guy. I've I'm, I'm never used to Aztec. I've been using an Aztec for uh, 15 years. I love the Aztec. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they both swear by it. No, it doesn't matter what they use. And they only last about six years, they break. Yeah. Because it's a resin. Yeah. It's a resin. They're fixed now. The plunger? So they'll break. They wear out the little rubber too. So you just buy your own. Show. Hey, that's good. Oh, yeah. If they use some as tech Okay, so it's the last chance to use it. Remember, nobody, okay, I'm gonna show you how to clean it next. Okay, cleaning cleaning the airbrush. Probably the most important thing you'll have to do. I just blow it in like that. Okay. For cleaning for, for using the uh semi acrylics, I use the methyl hydrate, which you can get at uh, Canadian tire. Quite inexpensive. And what I do is good too. What I do is I a soft brush here, a soft brush. Pour some. Can you pour it on the model so we can see what happens? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice two right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Stripped and it's, it's uh, not a because the turret's not right. <laughs> yeah, the gun barrel's wrong. Okay. <laughs> So basic, right, get the, get your uh, <coughs> methyl hydrate, put it in here, 
Okay, they just swish around. What is that a zero zero brush or uh, one? That's uh, number three. There we go. Just do this. Now, once you've done that, what I suggest you do is you take your needle out. Take your needle out. In this case, this is. This is a Naya water, but it's very similar on all the other airbrushes. You've got a needle here which goes back and forth. Take that out and clean and clean the needle. Just get in and get your brush. Okay. Clean it. Now, something which I uh, use. Um, these are these things you use for cleaning your teeth. Like a little Christmas tree? I don't want to control. Well, mine was a real Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> just take this, poke this in here, and then just give it a little cl And this gets all the junk out. Blow this out. Yeah. Yeah. That's just cute. That's why I don't have one of those. Um, okay. you know, what I do is, is I spray. Yeah. See, I'm taking this out. I'm taking the needle out. I've put the brush in the back. And I don't think you clean your teeth. Get this at, uh, get, get this at uh, any drugstore. Shop for Stride Mark. Now, what you might find sometimes. After a long, for a long time, uh, time of using oh, it, was, you uh, might get the needle might get uh, jammed. Sometimes, when you take this off here, take the take the front cover off here, you can see where the needle that sets sits. I always when I always take I always run it back. Reverse way, the blunt end in first. That lines everything up. Now you just push this through here. Now you can see the needle is protruding by maybe I don't know, a couple of millimeters. As you pull this back, the needle goes back and forth. What will happen? What will happen? Sometimes you get a build, paint up build up, and the needle won't set, won't set, uh, settle in there properly. It won't uh, won't protrude all the way through. So what I do is. In the, in the case of the eye water, so you have to get the uh, little wrench out, little tiny little wrench, which is about, it's very very small, and you take off you take off the uh, the tip here, take this off here, and there's a tiny little tip. It's it's really small on the uh, on the eye water. It's tiny. And you can see. You can see it this. It's, it's, you, you, let me see it on the white, on the piece of paper. It's only like maybe five millimeters long, tiny little thing. So when that gets jammed and the needle's not setting, not sitting properly. In other words, not, in other words, it's not protruding like that. What you have to do is clean this. So what I would do, I would put this into some thinner, let it soak, and then I get some very very fine stainless steel wire. Untwist a few strands. You get a couple of strands. Then you take the strands and you poke it in there, and you poke it through it so that it gets all the dirt and crap and stuff out. Soak it back again. So eventually it's clean enough that the needle will will sit, bed itself like that. Okay. So you then what you do, obviously, you put this back. Be very very careful with this. If you, if you cross thread it, you bugger up the airbrush. Just finger tight, don't over tighten it. I know I know some guy actually stripped it and he had to get a new airbrush, so be very, very careful. Just finger tight and maybe just a little just a little just a little touch just to tighten it back, <coughs> just a tad, okay? And once that's done, line up put it put the blunt end in first, just to line everything up. And then rotate it 180 degrees. Rotate. And then push it in. As you can see. It's, it's sitting nice. It's, it's, it's sitting nice in the uh, in the tip. Hey Sandy, when you're, when you're putting the needle in, do you put it in until you get resistance, or? Yes. Yeah. Well, you can see. You can actually, you can see it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. 
We'll talk about lubricants later on. Um, talk about the blunt end right Yeah, blunt end goes <laughs> first, yeah. But be very careful because these needles are very, very sharp and they damage about very easily. And when they do damage, you can't really fix them. You have to get a new one. They're about 15 bucks. I always have a couple of spare ones because they sure as heck you know, they always break at the worst possible moment. Another thing is, uh, okay. Reassemble it. Now, is, uh, where, it, where it goes down here, you push down, there's like a little valve here, it's spring loaded. Sometimes that might stick. Just disassemble it, put some WD 40 or light machine oil there, and you get a nice action. Uh, if you want me to, I can show you how to strip. Strip that apart if you want me to. Okay. If you want to take this out, you take the first of all, always remove the needle. Be very careful. Then you can undo this. This comes out. Comes out. Then the actual plunger comes out. Now, you can see in there where the valve is. That will sometimes become sticky. Clean it with using uh, uh, the methyl hydrate. Also, you can buy from Tamiya this airbrush cleaner. This thing will strip anything. It's, it's, I think it's got acetone in it, amongst other things. But it, if it, when I finish a project, I'll always give it a clean with this. It takes all the, uh, all the paint out, regardless whether it's oil paint or acrylic paint. To reassemble it, you just push this back in again. Also the ten we, as you turn this in, it increases the tension on the actual airbrush. So you always put the needle in, put the needle in backwards, line everything up, push it through, then rotate it. And that means you won't, you won't damage your needle. Some people take the tip off to clean it. I don't because it's, you might, I'm more worried about damaging the tip than I am about damaging the needle. Put back together like so, and your put a little bit of first, uh, blow a little bit of this back in it. Okay, there's your airbrush. Um, I don't. At the end of the night, I will take strip it all down, clean it, put it back together again. So next day when I go to use it, it works. There's nothing more frustrating than you get your stuff out, you put your airbrush on, it doesn't work. So as I say, I can't overstress how important it is to clean your airbrush, lubricate it, keep it in good condition. There's also, uh, if you want to lubricate the needle, there's a Iowada make a uh, a lubricant here. You can just pull it out a little bit, put some of this on, and it lubricates the needle. Just a, just a little tag, not very much. There we go. There we go. Um, you can buy these little brushes. These are also you can buy. These are actually made by uh, Grex, similar to these. To the I, I prefer it. This is fine. You buy these at uh, Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, you can also buy. These are actually. Uh, Little reamers for reaming the uh, the tip. Uh, I think, I'm not sure where I got those from, but they're good to use for cleaning your the, the tip. Uh, yeah, it does actually. But I prefer yeah, I prefer using the. Uh, this is actually stainless steel wire. It's actually it's actually aircraft quality for doing. Uh, so I got it from work. Yeah, can't, can't get it. Can't get it anymore. Do they know that you have it? Possibly not. <laughs> Possibly not, sure. Did you now use fiber optic? <laughs> yeah, actually, we did, yeah. Actually, I use fiber optic wires for my antennas. So, there we go, basically go. Now, this is a, this is a, the, uh, this is a basic, this is a basic in, uh, introductory uh, revolution, which is uh, about, i say, 150 bucks. If you want something a little bit more, a little bit more uh, expensive, you can go to something like, uh, let me show you what else I've got here. And it sounds better when you say it. This is the high performance. 
This is the uh, Iowa Water High Performance. I'll show you one of these. This is a really nice airbrush. This is about 225, 250. Right now the dollar is fluctuating a little bit, so it's uh, this is very similar to the uh, Revolution. It's got a few more features. Uh, you can adjust, you can clean things here. You can set, you just you can set things here. So how much you want, you can pull it back. You can pull this back to clean the needle. Just a nice airbrush. I mean, that is a lovely airbrush. Uh, I think about 225 bucks. Uh, I think John, you've got the uh, Micron, I'm Super Micron. How'd you like that? Yeah, is it a bit fussy to clean and stuff or not too bad? Do you use it as a general airbrush or just for detail? Yeah, just for detail. And that's the thing, that's a, a 0.18 needle, isn't it? So that's about 400 bucks, I think, isn't it? But 400. Yeah, 400. and that's a 0.18 needle. Yeah, so 0.18. But for general, for general modeling, this, this, these for just for general modeling, these will do, do, do you fine. Um, there's another, there's another manufacturer out there called uh, Harder Steinbeck, a German manufacturer. They're uh, releasing a, a really nice airbrush. It's called, this is the Infinity. These are about two, oops, 250. They're, uh, these are, that, that's a beautiful airbrush. It, this, this actually goes down to 0.15, which I think is, a, is the smallest you can actually commercially get. If we order now, can we get free uh, no, yes. You'll get two. The uh, I think I bought this. Uh, this is I bought this from. Uh, what's that? This like Elm City, City Hobbies. Hobbies. Yeah. Stock, yeah. And what they know they about two thirty nine, two thirty nine. But more yet. Yeah. Well, the problem is that our dollars, our dollars gone down the last little while. But uh, you can get this actually. You can get that one with two needles. So I think a point four is it? A point four. I have to set the point one five. But this is a beautiful little airbrush, thoroughly recommend it. Okay, this another thing here, this is something you can use, I've never used it. When you, you can, instead of uh, putting fumes into the, uh, your modeling room, you can press this and clean your airbrush in here, then you empty it afterwards. Me? Uh, eye water. I think I've got so by eye water, it's made, for, it's made for somewhere else, I think about 25 bucks. Yeah, this little glass bottle, you can put stuff in it. Um, we've talk, talked about the uh, different types of thinner, methyl hydrate, I used to use methyl hydrate, works fine. I don't, um, I don't have a spray booth because, but uh, I think if you use the uh, acrylics, they're not too really uh, too smelly, they're not carcinogenic, I don't know, I hope not anyway. Uh, not in my case, Chuck. That's to 150 pounds. Oh. Also, when I'm when I'm cleaning out, you do that. You get a black pressure. It cleans everything out. Okay, okay. All right. So any questions on airbrushing, cleaning the yeah, airbrush? Yes, Kate. The difference between the metal and the the difference and what purposes do you use it for? Well, for general cleaning and general cleaning, I use a methyl hydrate. Every every time I finish a project, I run this I run this uh, the uh, Tamiya cleaner through it. And have a sniff of that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, this this here it says uh, it's all in Japanese, unfortunately, so I can't read it. Oh, here, Timmy Airbrush Cleaner. It's called uh, it's called Timmy Airbrush Cleaner. Just Sandy. Yeah. Acetone doesn't clean as well as lacquer. Yeah, well, because, I mean, I've done enough. Yeah, but, but it takes epoxy. Don't stick your nose. Don't you think that's... <laughs> you guys get this stuff, never stick your nose under it. Because when you do this, you can see the fumes coming out. It could still be a lot. It's a lot. Here's an option. It's a 1986 blade. Here's an option. So, you so, I think acetone is actually liver, doesn't it? Okay, so any questions regarding airbrushing, airbrushes, cleaning, compressors, whatever. Well, thanks, Andy. Okay, thank you very much.
So again, uh, thanks again, Sandy, for part two. Yeah. Um, next month, we're going to either have a demonstration on Zimmerit, or we're going to have a special speaker, Canadian Forces, who served in Afghanistan. I'm not too sure which we're going to have, but it will be posted on the website.